Hello everyone, thanks for coming. I would like to thank the organizers of this meeting for inviting me here today. As you may know, global sports betting market showing growth every year. According to the prediction, the sports betting revenue will reach almost 14 billion of dollars all over the world. Just imagine, this is very impressive numbers. And that's one of the reasons why I am working in this business. Let me introduce myself. My name is Andrew Winda, and I am working in DraftKings company for more than five years. The main activity is the development of betting related products. I would like to present you the story about the issue with the speed and scalability that we have, how it was solved, and how fast reads were achieved. During the problem solving, artificial event sourcing was introduced as well. The global sports betting market is primarily driven by the growing population of betting in this market. Growing number of online betting applications do demand the demand for online platform. Since football becomes more and more popular, the betting revenue for it also grows appropriately. A lot of people would like to earn easy money and they are still looking for such kind of opportunity. Our company provides B2B and B2C betting services. Thus, business and players can rely on its own considerations. Gamers have an opportunity to bet via the different kind of devices. As it PC, laptop, smartphone, tablets, slot machine, whatever. Now, let's imagine that there is pretty important game, like final of the Champions League. Two superpower teams went head to head, and the scoring morning is brewing. Players want to make a winning bet, so they are going to the platform, choosing the event, click on bet. But they see a sad picture. Bet can be sad due to some system error. Or it's a pity, but not only for the player, but for the company as well, as they are losing money. So let's dig into the details of how the bet placement is working on. There are several steps during the bet placement. First of all, there is a need to retrieve the event and player data. Then check the needed restrictions. Then proceed with the checking the odd. It's pretty important because during the bet the odd can be changed. And if the odd is being changed then the bet cannot be set. And finally, if all the previous conditions are passed, then place in the bed. So, not so many steps, but anyway, under the load, system could operate with some delay. Here is the theme of the existing system architecture. There is an application that uses the cache and store it within the memory. Cache producer is a separate application that pumps the data from one data source into another one. This is corresponding to write around cache strategy. So let's discuss what the main benefits of this architecture is having. The first one is 
cash producer has no relation to the cash consumer. Also, there is only one, one producer and many consumers. Thus, so finally, as we having only one producer, then the load on the main storage where all the data is stored is reduced significantly. At the same time, this architecture has a several important drawbacks. Since the cache is being populated by a certain rules, then consumer can't control its size and content. Due to this fact, scalability of every cache consumer is pretty resource intensive. Also, any process that requires to have fast access to the data should use its own cache or DB layer. In such a case, many applications will have to send requests to the database, thereby reducing its performance. So, there is a problem on how to quickly gain an access to the whole database and to avoid already known drawbacks. To solve the problem, there is a need to understand what exactly should be achieved. In our case, there are several items. First of all, fast reads with the simple scalability options and also frugal use of resources that is pretty important and what possible options do we have in my opinion fast distributed and scalable data source can hold all the data as a reliable option let's see what types of data source are existing and could be used for our needs? As you can see, there are different types of the databases, whether it's SQL based or no SQL based. Traditionally, SQL, SQL based databases are used uh, in case where just the Storing of the data is pretty important. On the other hand, no scale databases propose flexible structure of the data to be saved. At the same time, there is one particular type from the no scale databases called k value. And since k value databases are highly scalable and can handle high volumes of traffic, then this particular type has been chosen. So, in our case, we have defined to use Redis as our main data storage. Data stream should provide proper load of the data into the Redis. The only one thing that is left, how to do it? And is it possible at all? Since many applications write data into the database, then there is no centralized application that controls data flow. So, the only way of how to construct data stream is to create it artificially. To do it, there is a need to constantly pull the database for any change in it. As you may see on the diagram, we have a special application called Scheduler. This application is responsible to run a job on a regular basis. Scheduler was built on a Quartz.net technology. So, it will just populate the signals for running the jobs, and all these signals are populated via the ready rabbit mq channel our job 
is responsible for the regular checking the database, for retrieving the data that that is changed from the last up, update or from, from the last run. All changes are being produced into the Kafka. Another one application is Redis Worker. This kind of application is responsible to consume all the Kafka messages and based on this string fulfill the Redis with the data. To provide regular data stream, it's very important to have these two applications to be working all the time without any error or lack. So, let's talk why do we need Kafka at all. And don't write the data from the database into the Redis directly. Indeed, to populate the Redis with all the data, it's possible to skip using Kafka and just grabbing the data from the data store and put it in the Redis directly. But let's discuss what the benefits will we have if you use Kafka. So, in such a case, re retrieving and pushing the data are segregated processes. It allows us to populate Redis with a different kind of data. At the same time, if we will need to repopulate the data, we have a chance to do it, because Kafka contains all the data and could be treated as a backup for the whole system. And one more thing to be highlighted is that during the repopulation of the data uh, from the database to the Kafka, um, sorry, from the database to Redis, there is no involvement of the database itself because all the data is stored within the Kafka already. Also, it is safe to add new properties into the document that is storing within the Kafka. And data stream can be used for other fulfillment processes that is uh, already exist in the company. So Kafka is pretty important thing and very useful in our case. The whole scheme of getting the data and pushing it into the radius is presented on the slide. Despite on different variety of processes and their communications between each other, the logic is simple and straightforward. Another one moment that I want to highlight is the historical run. Since regular job for the sync grabs the data from the data store that is being changed. And in this case, there is no possibility to fulfill the radius with all the data that we have. For such kind of the situation, we are having uh, some something called as historical RAM or timeless job. The only difference between regular sync and timeless RAM. What data is being processed? In case of historical run, the whole database is being processed and all the data is populated from the database into the Kafka. It's a very long process. Since we are using Redis as a main storage, so it should be very stable and the data should be persisted in it as well. In our case, Redis is being used with a Sentinel topology. So what is it? Redis Sentinel builds on the replication base 
and provides high availability for Redis without human intervention. Sentinel constantly monitors master and replicas and checks if they're working as they expected. If something goes wrong, it can run automatic failover and promote different master. In addition to that, Sentinel serves as a configuration provider to connect in clients. So, if the process of failover, clients will get an updated address of a master node. So, the data stream and reading the data are on a safe site. Communication scheme, in our case, is the following. Redis worker connected to a master node and responsible for writing the data only. At the same time, service for retrieving the data from the Redis connects to its slaves. Such kind of approach allows us to speed up the reads. So, we are having segregated processes, one process for writing the data and another one process for reading the data. Ok, now we have a working approach. So, what could be our next steps? Seems that there are a few items which I want to highlight. First of all, it's data quality, then it's Redis stability as a primary database, and finally, ETL, extract, transform, load process. We have faced with a situation of how our data was organized in the main storage. In our case, it was MS SQL Server. There was a table with all needed data, and among the table's fields, there was one field called last updated. So every time when the data is being changed within the main storage, this field was updated as well. And in terms of data change detection, we are good. But the devil is in the details. In our case, there was a need to store not all the data from the table, but a certain amount of it. And due to this fact, the stream of changes contains a lot of false positive comments and data. So, based on this knowledge, there is a clear that we have redundancy of data within the Kafka and also a lot of not needed operations within the Redis. And how to deal with it? That was decided to use checksums. In our case, we are calculated the checksums for all the fields that should be loaded into the Redis. Such approach will allow us to reduce the amount of data transferred from database into the Redis. And also the amount of data that will be stored within the Kafka also will be reduced. So briefly, the algorithm is the following. Firstly, calculate checksums for necessary fields only. Then, check whether calculated checksum was changed from the committed one. And if so, then row with the fields that is being inserted into the output result set. And finally, we should commit calculated checksum to prevent unnecessary data to be inserted into the Kafka and Redis. The adjusted scheme of the data stream is shown on the slide. 
introduced parts are highlighted with the red color. Kafka was very useful in this case, since we have added new fields into each message. Checksum. These uh, fields are checksum and also the flag that the checksum is changed. So, based on these fields, our jobs were adjusted accordingly. And right after this change, we have measured uh, the reduction of the data to be pushed into the Kafka and the comments uh, that are getting to the radius. In our case, we have reached almost 38% of achievement. So it's pretty great result. Moving forward. Now let's focus on our persistent storage, Redis. Since it's very important to have as much as possible stable database, then what options should be considered? First of all, data should be stored safely and no data loss is unacceptable. Redis has several options for the persistence. First of all, it's RDB or Redis database, then append only file or ROF. Just mixing of the RDB and ROF or just nothing. So Redis is just a cache without any persistent storage. But it's not our story. So let's talk about the options. First of all, it's RDB. What is it? It's just a regular backup that can be made by some schedule. Append only file is like a transaction log in a database. This transaction log holds hold the right commands that are coming to raise. Another one option is uh, mixing of the RDB and append only file. In this case, we will have backup and also the transaction log at the same time. In our case, we have chosen append only file. RDB and append only file, in our case, it's not needed because we are having Kafka and it's our backup for all the data. So, append only file is a stable one, but not so simple in use. Important thing of the append only file is the proper configuration. From the whole configuration, there are two main options. How often do we say the right commands into the log? And what size should be chosen for writing into the logs? In our case, these parameters are 1 second and 512 megabytes. Next stability option is how to read the data. As you remember, our service connected to the replica to reduce response time. But what will be in case when replica is not synced with the master? In this case, we have only two options. It's like to be or not to be. So to read or not to read the stale data. In our case, we have chosen the last one option, not to read. So don't serve the stale data. In this case, no reads will be possible while replica is in a bad state. The final challenge is related to the historical ETL job. This is the process when the whole dataset is divided into the batches and then each batch is being received from the database and populated into the Kafka. The difficulty was that when the job is restarted, 
Right after that, the progress of the job is lost, and the jobs job can be started from the very beginning. So due to this behavior, uh, long running jobs are like a hell because they can be restarted once a day and never ending. So to avoid such weird situation, there was introduced several steps to prevent it. First of all, on the beginning of the timeless ETL, the whole dataset was split into a certain number of pages with a particular entity IDs. Such approach allows us to reduce calculation of the entities on each batch of retrieving. Also, after each batch returned to the DB worker, then index of last reviewed page is being saved into the job storage. This saving allows us, in case of restarting, continue from the last processed job. Every job has its own identifier that allows to con continue the loading from the last return page. In case there is no saved information for the job identifier, then the load will begin from the very beginning. There is working product with its infrastructure and processes. To be sure that whole product works well, there is a need to do proper functional testing. All test cases are automated and every new feature, bug or deployment requires small amount of time to prove the version stability. At the same time, not only functionality expected to be on a high level, performance also requires to be on high. Under the performance tests, we are testing response time, stability issues, performance, bottlenecks, system reliability issues. Performance tests are mostly written on the NBomber platform. And also just want to highlight that during the performance test, we are testing the usual player behavior, like the player is going to the site, choose an event, making some bets and actually placing the bet. And after that, the settlement, whether the player is winning or losing the money. So it's pretty, pretty whole stable uh, test that's showing us our bottlenecks. On the next slide, there is an information of the used technologies. As you may see, there are a lot. To be sure that on production, all software will be working well, there is a need to have proper monitoring. We are having several tools for, for this achievement. They are Kibana, Grafana, Datadog, and PagerDuty. So, a few words about each of them. Kibana is a well known system for logs observing. All the logs are storing within the Elasticsearch. And Kibana is just the tooling for reaching the data from the Elasticsearch and to viewing them. Another one is Grafana. It's being used for uh, different kinds of the metrics. In Grafana, there is uh, an ability to create or your own dashboard on the SOS metrics and also to create an alert if some metrics are in good in bad state. Another one is Datadog is a system to have a lot of needed monitors that are relying on for example Kibana queries, Grafana metrics, 
console health checks, and etc. And finally, Pager Duty. It's a system to track all the monitors and raise a call when some alert is occurred. For the ETL jobs, there are several types of defined alerts. First of all, we are in expect inspecting the errors that are occurring on the DB working layer. Almost all the issues that are related to the database can be viewed on DB Worker. So, healthy of DB Worker is pretty important, and unhealthy of it affects on the data quality and data stream. Next few alerts are related to the population into the Redis. Redis Worker Cath Collect shows how many messages are not processed. If this metric is uh, greater than zero, then uh, it affects uh, that the data consistency uh, is not in a good state within the Redis, and some actions should be taken. Then, number of write retries into the Redis. If the number of retries is growing up, so it shows that Redis is not in a good state and it can't handle the incoming uh, commands for writing and edit the data. So it's very urgent and it needs huge attention. And finally, check some worker Kafka lag. It shows how many messages are not processed. If this, this number is greater than zero or even growing up, so it shows that uh, the quality of the messages within the Kafka is not so high because we are having a lot of duplication messages there. This is the screen of the monitor for the DB worker that is set up within the data doc. Or on on this slide, uh, I I just want to highlight that this particular dat data doc monitor is uh, monitoring the Elasticsearch query, and if some errors is occurring, then the alert on data doc monitor will be erased. And finally, there is a screen from the pager duty. Currently, there is no issues, so no worries. All is good and team can relax. And this is how our Grafana metrics look like. There are several metrics. Total items in the cache. How many messages the Redis worker consume. And how fast the data is being saved into the Redis. The total items in the cache should be growing And also, um, while the uh, total items in the cache are growing, uh, the messages on the Redis worker sh should be consumed as well. And Kafka lag for the Redis workers, as we have several ones. On the service level, we have a few metrics as well. They are Cache hits versus DB requests. In our case, cache uh, is a Redis database, and that request to the database is actually the request to the Microsoft SQL Server, as we are using it uh, as the main data store for our DB worker. Response time from the Redis itself, and years while accessing the Redis. I will demonstrate the Grafana dashboards briefly. So, this is the Grafana dashboard where uh, there is an information for the cache hits versus the database calls. 
as, as you may see the database calls uh, exist but they are at the very very low level and it shows us that the system performs well also we are monitoring for the response time and number of calls so if the response time is growing it shows that maybe something is wrong with Redis itself but at the same time uh, it's very important not, uh, not only to monitor the response time but also to take into the consideration the number of the calls to the Redis itself and to the service. So if response time is growing but at the same time number of calls is growing as well so maybe maybe it's right behavior but anyway uh, this time of alerting should be considered to be uh, taken into the consideration and digging into it thank you for your attention i hope you will have gained an insight into the construction of the system that provide fast reads and how to use Redis and to construct the data stream and what kind of monitoring should be introduced as well. And now I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.